Hey everyone, I'm photographer and filmmaker TK North. In this video, we'll be looking at the most common composition rule there is, which of course is the rule of thirds. When to use it, when not to use it, and how it can improve your photography. So I'm sure most of you have heard about the rule of thirds. If not, you've probably seen it in photos or cinema, perhaps without even realizing or taking note. For us as photographers, it is a really powerful composition to master and understand. One that if you practice and understand it enough, it will definitely improve your photography. Like most photography rules, this isn't something you always have to strictly follow and not every great photo always follows this rule. However, it is a really great guideline or even a tool in your bag of tricks that can really help with your composition. Just get you thinking more about your overall composition position. Like everything, practice of this rule really leads to muscle memory and gaining trust in your eye, eventually becoming more of an instinct than a rule so you can see exactly what works and what doesn't work. If you're starting out, it is an incredibly helpful tool to help give you some guidance when you're composing your shot. Once this gets ingrained in your mind, you will start to compose shots in this way without even consciously thinking about the rule. So what is the rule of thirds? The rule of thirds is a composition guideline that places your subject in the left or right third of an image, leaving the other two thirds more open. While there are other forms of composition, the rule of thirds generally leads to compelling and well-composed shots. It's also probably the most well-known or well-recognized composition and a really valuable one to learn when you're getting started. So basically, if you imagine dividing a photo or even your camera's viewfinder into nine equal zones using horizontal horizontal and vertical lines, this forms your rule of thirds grid. To give you an idea of how powerful this composition is, you only need to look at pretty much any camera or even any phone out there. Usually it has an option to turn on the rule of thirds grid to help assist with your composition. These grid lines basically split your image into a grid three by three, meaning that the corners of this one central square are the intersection points in your grid where you want to place the focal point of your shot. You can basically think of these intersection points on the grid as crosshairs or a target where you want to aim your focus. This type of composition helps you to balance your main subject with negative space. This can help portray a story leading to the viewer's interpretation and help you nail an effective composition that will draw in the viewer's eye. So let's look at some first-hand advice on using the rule of thirds. So putting in repetitions of practice, really using the rule of thirds is going to be the best way to master this composition. Eventually those grid lines and intersection points will become ingrained in your brain. Until that point, here's some really useful tips to steer your experimentation in the right direction. Number one, practice with your camera's rule of thirds grid. So this you can turn on and see what you're doing as you're doing it. Eventually you'll notice you are naturally composing certain shots in this way without even needing the grid. Second, take a rule of thirds field trip. This could involve heading to a park or even heading out to take some street photography. Take at least 10 or more different frames using the rule of thirds. Again, the more you do it, the more ingrained it will become as a potential composition for you. Number three, keep your eye on the eyes. This means choosing where you want your point of focus to exist before you even start shooting. If shooting people or animals, this can be really important to really focus on the eyes when choosing your composition. Next up, breaking the rule of thirds. As mentioned, this guideline isn't something you always have to strictly follow. Like most rules, there are times where it is made to be broken. When we are starting out though, it does provide a bit of a guardrail. So when should we leave that guardrail behind? Here's a few tips when not to use the rule of thirds. One, filling the frame. When shooting portraits, one option is to totally fill the frame, which can make for a really interesting composition. When there are parts of an image that aren't necessarily fully in the frame or when there's a subject that's very much in the foreground of the frame, these examples, often the subject is slightly more centered in my compositions. The next one is pull back from your subject. When your subject is going to be really small in part of the image, 
especially in quite symmetrical surroundings. Sometimes the best way to highlight them is to break the rule of thirds and put them right in the center of the image. Here you could still place them in the lower third, but not on the four crosshair points. The next one, try a totally different composition style. Play around with your composition, even try composing a photo in the shape of the letter Z. This is a technique that can create a really nice flow because it's how you naturally read a page. The key here is to keep experimenting, see what works, see what doesn't work. Number four, take multiple shots. This could mean taking a shot with your subject dead center, take one with them in the upper right and then one in the upper left. If you think you got it on that first shot, don't worry, take two or three more just to experiment. You might pick a totally different shot when you actually go to edit them. Lastly, don't worry, you can always fix it in post. Getting the shot you want in camera is obviously ideal. You can't go back and recapture those moments, but fortunately, thanks to technology, you can actually go and crop your image to a rule of thirds composition after the fact. I use Lightroom for all my editing and it's so easy to quickly adjust your crop. Here you can further see how different elements work and play around more with the rule of thirds, especially by using the different crop overlays. A shortcut, simply hit R to crop and O to toggle through the different overlays. Of course, you'll notice there's even a rule of thirds overlay. Even as you edit, you're training yourself on that repetition of how to see and use the rule of thirds. At first, you might struggle to recognize which photos will work well with the rule of thirds, but with practice, you will just know it will become second nature. You won't even have to think about it. In the end, your eye and your audience will definitely thank you. All right, that's it from me. I'm TK North. Thanks so much for watching.